again. I'm Nancy Kaminsky, and today we're going to paint, paint luscious red apples. This painting is a little easier. Also, we're going to use very dramatic red tones. Actually, it's a little exaggerated, but in painting, I want to show you the structure, and in doing so, I've made very, very red, yummy apples. Let's get started. Stain the canvas. Like this. Not too runny. Oops, I picked up something on the way in. Well, that's all right. I'll never know the difference. Wipe it off. Not too hard. I notice I've just gotten a little fuzz on mine. Be very careful about that, because if you get fuzz in your paint, it will show. There we are. Now, put the grids in, as usual. Divide your canvas in quarters first, like this. Now, I'm using the same size canvas for a, a reason, a very technical reason. However, you're not so confined. But I will say one thing. You must consider the size of your canvas along with your subject. In this subject, we will use a vertical canvas because it, it makes a better composition. And when you see what we're, do, we're, we're doing, you'll understand what I was trying to, uh, the point I was trying to make. There we are, Something like that. Fine. Now we're going to draw a branch. This is a little unusual in that we're not using a bowl or a pot or what have you. We're just drawing a branch with some fruit on it. I thought this would be a nice change for you. Let's have one come this way. Put your branches in very loosely at first. We're going to change them a little later, but to hang the fruit, let's do this. We have one going here, and then we have another one going through the center like this. Of course, it's a branch, so don't have it too smooth and give it a little schmaltz like that, and that's it. Then we have another branch like that. It is a little symmetrical, but that's all right. It will change. Now we have two pieces of fruit back here. Just put your branches in like that. Leave that for just a moment. Now we'll start with the apples. Again, very simple form. We have one beautiful apple up here, like this. Mine always gets so large. I paint everything so large, like that. And we have another one here, like this. Very loosely. Please don't worry about the form. It will take shape with color. And we have two that are behind the leaves. Uh, as we paint, I will explain this, which will give the impression of fruit behind leaves. You see, they're not all in front, of course. There's some behind the branches and what have you. And we have another one here like that. We have one coming down here this way. This happened to be a hole here, so when I designed this composition, I realized that I had a space here, so I just simply added another branch and another apple. That's what's lovely about fruit and flowers. You can add buds and what have you and fill in the holes. Now we have three apples. These are very interesting because they're one behind the other, and in color, you will notice a difference, more than in the drawing. Please be sure to draw one fruit over another. Do not try to draw a half a fruit behind, for example, put the center apple, then try to draw a half an apple. Draw the fruit in entirely, each one. It will save you a lot of problems because of distortion. But we won't paint them that way. I'll show you in a moment how we will paint them. There's three of them together. Naturally, they're not in the same position. They're like that, one behind the other. Now we have two apples down here, like this. There again, we have one behind the other. Thank goodness. Draw it in. Like that. Now don't worry about the little stems and what have you, because we will add all of that later on. We have some lovely leaves. Please do not draw the leaves in at the moment either because we will change and, and add leaves according to the space we have and what have you. So you're not so confined. You may decide to change the position of the leaves or what have you. 
leave yourself room to work around in. Don't confine yourself to, to a drawing in such a way that you can't add or subtract to improve the composition. Okay? There you are. Of course, sometimes it doesn't always improve it. You end up changing it, and it's worse than it was before, but that's not very often. I'm going to add some leaves just to give you an idea, but I will change them in a little while. I'm going to leave that for the moment. Now, the next thing we're going to do is shade the apples. The light is coming from the left, so we're going to shade the right side of the apples, like this. Now, the point I would like to make in painting the fruit, they are round objects, so we try to use round strokes like this. Every stroke that we put on this canvas furthers the form. You're not filling in an empty space. You are constantly thinking form, creating a form. In this case, think apples. Think round like this. You see? That's very important. It's one stroke. You create the character of the object you're painting like that. Now, this apple is in deep shadow. As a matter of fact, these are in deep shadow because they're behind the leaves, which you will see in a little while. This is behind this one, like that. This one side only. This is behind this apple, so it's just one, and this one is in front, so it's part of it is shaded only. This is not as dark as those, but it's not as light as these are in, that are in the light. Like that, fine. I think that's all. That's enough of the drawing and leave it alone. Now we're going to, of course, do the painting. In this painting, we have a little different situation that we have the dark tone at the top, the middle tone, and the light tone. The reason I did this is because we have a lot of dark leaves there. In painting it dark, it will help us when we have all these leaves to do, to keep, to keep that area very dark and very dense. So we start with the dark tone at the top like this. Now, you'll notice, as we've painted objects or paintings, the background color is always grayed down. That means it's not as bright as the objects we are painting. For the very simple reason, it's just that. It's a background color, and it should not compete with what you're painting. It should just be the background or the foil for the painting or the object you're painting. Now, if you lose your branches, forget it, because we're going to go right back to it. Now, for you, as you paint them out, because I don't want you going in between them, it shows. Scratch it out like this. When we get some paint on, I want to show you a stroke that I'm very fond of doing, which we haven't done so far. I call it my crisscross stroke. There we are. I'm sure that Rembrandt had his own ideas about stroke, but I don't think he had a crisscross stroke. This is strictly a Kaminsky stroke. Get it all on first. Don't try to have a painting right away. Get your paint on and then work it. Go a third of the way down, like this. Now leave it. Scratch out your branches so you don't really become too, too lost. I'm, I don't want you to get hysterical, wondering where the branch went. But anyway, oops. There it is. That's not part of the system, the oops. OK, let's go to the middle tone, like this. This is a little brighter than I thought, but nonetheless, it's perfectly all right. When you get the green leaves on, you will see the difference. I always get a little impatient with large areas to paint because I'm anxious to get to the fruit. So I get impatient with the background work, and you will too. But take your time and Think it out very carefully, but hurry up. Don't fuss with it. Get it all on, because we're going to do something very exciting in just a moment. Now let's put the light tone on at the bottom. Oops. This paint's very soft, so. There we are. 
This is a yummy color, and it's beautiful with the red apples. Now, you will notice, and I will keep telling you, but there's one thing I do want to tell you right now. I've used an off shade of green as a background because what actually happens is that the thing that will be dominant in this painting will be the apples because the green leaves and the off shade of green in the background are related. You will not notice them as much, but the apples will be very, very, very dramatic. And you must create drama when you paint. You must create a painting that has impact. That's why the knife painting is so wonderful for a beginner. Even if you don't draw very well, it doesn't matter because some of the famous impressionists, the work was very distorted, but the color was wonderful, very vibrant. All right, there we go. We're going to work a stroke in like this. Take a little of the light and medium tone and go up into the dark tone, and we work a crisscross stroke like this. Don't lose your tonal values. That's very important not to lose your tonal values, please. You went to a lot of trouble to mix those three tones. Don't lose them. We're going to work a little dark tone and medium tone down here like this. You see, because you have a large expanse of canvas here, and so we need a little excitement in the background like this. Don't lose it. There we are. Just enough so it's not flat looking. Now we'll leave that for just a moment. I would like to darken it with a little purple in here. I'm so sure happy that there isn't anyone standing on the right of me because right now they would look like a palette. There we are. Let's make this a little darker. We have some wonderful dark leaves going up in there. Don't lose your apples. We will change this again and again, so please don't fuss with it and don't worry about it, but get it in there like that. Don't lose them. The apples especially don't lose. We have another branch coming down here like that. And be sure that your apples hang on the branches, right? Not hanging out there. Of course, you have to be very careful that you don't have a Christmas branch either with the Christmas balls on it. That could be a little problem, too. All right, let's leave that for the moment. Let's add a wee bit of red for a little excitement because we're going to use a color in the apples into the background to relate the whole thing. Now, let's leave that for the moment. Let's start with the apples. We'll start at the top. Now, this is the thing that's very exciting, and I want you to watch this very carefully because the stroke, again, is very important. We take the dark tone like this, and incidentally, these colors are not mixed. They are used straight from the palette. That should be a little blessing for you. And the light tone on the right side like that. And we take a little purple and blend it ever so little like that. I'll leave it for just a moment. Remember, we have a core area here where the little stem comes up, so that must be quite dark. And it has a bit of a light tone on the other side, which creates the feeling. We keep going. We go to this one. Now, these apples here are in the light, catching quite a lot of light, so they're quite bright. And we take the purple. That's a bit of, oh, it's a poor little thing. That one is, is in bad shape. Just a moment, we have a shriveled little apple here. We want nice, sexy apples there. Oops. There we are. Dark tone at the bottom. That way and a little light tone on the right side. Oops. It tells us that the light is catching the opposite side of that depressed area where the stem goes. All right. Let's go to the right one here. It's very dark. Actually, it's in the shade, or it's shaded by the leaves. So we do not see the bright tones on this one. Very little probably just a little on the left, but no highlight, just a wee bit. 
but not much. There we are. Take it down here like this. Now, if someone tells you after you're finished painting that you have a wonderful Christmas tree, just thank them. When I was teaching in California, my son also is an art major. He's, he paints in a very abstract manner. And so he and three of his friends came to visit me at the studio. And of course, they're the drip and school of painting. And um, in the class, everyone paints the same thing, very much as you do with me. And so they were horrified when they saw 10 of everything. And we were standing in front of these 10 apples. You see, I was sending my son to college for this little studio. And um, he was beginning to apologize for me, and I didn't like that. I was getting a little irritated with these, these boys anyway. And one boy said, do you mean you know what you're going to paint before you paint it? And another one said, this looks like calendar art. So I was really upset, you know. Finally, I was, we were standing in front of these 10 apples in the studio, and I poked my son on the chest. He's 6'5". And I said, Michael? Do you see those apples that look like apples? He says, yeah, ma. Well, I said, my dear, those apples that look like apples are sending you to college so you can paint an apple that doesn't look like an apple. Well, he, he said, touche, ma. So finally, I took them all back to the house, gave them a great spaghetti dinner, and the, this one boy said, well, anyway, Mrs. Kaminsky, you sure make great, great spaghetti. So I wasn't a total loss. <laughs>